My main body of research is in derivatives. So derivatives are something whose price is derived from something else. We look at the Bloomberg screen and look at the markets and try to put strategies together that take advantage of volatile market conditions. To the average layman, they just see stock prices and they see stock prices going up and stock prices going down. But behind the scenes, there's a much more interesting story and that more interesting story is the volatility of how things are rising, the acceleration of how prices are going up or perhaps going down. And volatility itself is an asset class. Bloomberg offers much, much more than a simple share price. You could go to any free data vendor like Google Finance or Yahoo Finance and you get the same information. We want to dig further behind that. So here we have the key statistics for Apple and we can dig deeper than that. We can see IS for the income statement, BS for the balance sheet, CF for the cash flow statement. And as part of any finance course, it would be a to get familiar with ratios. But really, we don't want the student to be spending hours and hours calculating ratios. Instead, what we want to know is how to interpret ratios. So Bloomberg provides a standardized set of ratios across all companies. And because they're calculated in exactly the same manner, we can compare from one company to the other. So here we have a ratio that many people would be familiar with, the gross profit margin. So if we think back to the income statement of Apple, you see at the very top, you have your revenue. Then you have your cost of revenue, which brings you down to the gross profit. So the gross margin is asking for every dollar that you receive in revenue, how much of that comes to gross profit? And as you can see from this period here, back in 2015 to 2020, the gross profit margin of Apple has been between 40% and 38%, as low as 37.82 in 2019. The level of this will be influenced by numerous factors, in particular that Apple are making physical goods with lots of precious metals in there, so they're going to, their cost of goods sold is going to be determined by the cost of precious metals. They're going to be manufactured in overseas countries, so the exchange between the US dollar and, let's say, the Taiwanese dollar or the Chinese um, RMB is going to influence their cost of sales. So students can come on here and immediately get gross margins and compare those gross margins to any company that they want. You can see that Apple is in the middle and on one side you've got their customers, so you'll recognize their customers. You'll see the Verizon and AT&T. And then on the other side, you can see their suppliers. So we can actually go to each of these companies in turn and look at their finance characteristics. Here we have the recent performance of Apple. And as you can see over the last few months, it's rather been going sideways. So if we wanted to trade a position in Apple, we could either buy the shares in the hope that it goes up or, sell, or go short in the shares, sell shares we don't actually own in the hope that it goes down. An alternative way of taking a directional position is used to the derivatives or options market. And Apple being a, a publicly quoted company, uh, they provide regular announcements to the market called a, a, a 10K in the US or if they provide announcements on a quarterly basis, the 10Q. And all of the details of the 10Ks and 10Qs are included in here. So we can look to see over the past number of quarters, their revenues. And as you can see, Apple's increasingly, from, two th from the start of 2020, you can see that their emphasis was on products, 86.2% coming from products. But by 2020, quarter four, you can see an increasing reliance upon services. So revenue that's attained from iCloud and the App Store. And you can see in that first, between the quarter one, 2020 and quarter two, 2020, a huge drop in revenue across all of their segments. And you can see some of them recovered better than others. You can see that Europe is still down below its quarter one value. Likewise, the Americas, but greater China, likewise, still down. Japan, still down. So some have recovered more than others. I'm a great believer in the efficient markets, and that means that the stock price, so the stock price on the tickers that are going around the room right now, that they reflect expectations of what's going to happen in the future. One of my main target markets that I look at is the luxury stock markets. For example, for example, Louis Vuitton, they are usually the first indicators of dropping off of demand, but they're also one of the first indicators of increased demand. As a luxury brand, have they recovered from the impact of COVID? Well, we can look at their segmental analysis 
which breaks it down into its business divisions and just put it from annuals to quarters. And you can see that huge hit in revenue from going from quarter one, 2022, quarter two. But actually you can see, so all of the segments were, were down, some quite dramatically. But you can see by the time we, their announcements were released uh, in October 2020 for their quarter three revenue, you can see that some segments, fashion and leather goods, has actually recovered quite significantly. Selective retailing is a number of duty-free stores, so you can see that that is not quite recovered. But as you can see, perfume and cosmetics, wines and spirits, watches and jewellery have all recovered. So Bloomberg is the largest provider of information in the world. Every announcement by every company in the world is in here. Every announcement by every central bank in the world is hidden behind here. So taking the whole myriad or whole spectrum of modules from economics through to um, alternative investments, behind the scenes here we can get any piece of data that we want. One of the great advantages of Bloomberg is not just looking at daily data, but also being able to look at the micro detail of an asset. So here we revisit a very famous day, the 23rd of June 2016, when the UK decided to leave the Eurozone. These times along the bottom are in US time. So you can see as, as the results started to emerge in the UK, um, which would have been late evening in the US. So this, this quotation is the number of US dollars per one GBP. So as you can see up here, we reached a peak here of just around about one and a half dollars. But as it became evident to the markets that the UK was going to leave the EU, you can see that it quickly declined towards $1.3 per pound or in a matter, as you can see in the space of this, from around about 8 p.m. US time till midnight US time, one pound no longer bought $1.5, but instead headed towards buying $1.3. Is a marketable skill in the job market. Bloomberg itself has its own certificate, the Bloomberg Market Concepts. And when you come to the lab, you simply type BMC at that flashing blue icon and register for Bloomberg Market Concepts. Complete the, the, the ever increasing number of modules and include that on your CV. So not only will you have an MSc in finance from the University of Liverpool, but you'll also have certification from Bloomberg to say that you are skilled in using their terminals.